I'm a girl, you're a boy. That's what it's all about, right? <clears throat> Karen didn't want to have anyone take a movie of her shoving popcorn into her face. I think we found a popcorn vendor there. Yes, Karen, I'm taking movies of you. And now we're in Bitburg, I guess. There's Carrie Lynn. We're in Bitburg for another Frank Burke family visit. Get some shopping done. Adri looking very pensive. Smoking her cigarette at the time. Hi, Mike. Yeah. Hello, Joni and Stuart. Karen, Adri. Other people coming out of the PX. I think we just went into the or the snack bar there for some shopping. There's Joni. I think Stuart or Adri used to take Joni's card and go in and do shopping with Stuart in the grocery store. Kids with those extended straws. They used to do that all the time. They'd get three or four straws and stick them together and play pea shooter with them. Yeah, we've loaded our groceries into the Volvo. I guess we're taking off. These are always adventures. Look at that, that big bass. This was for a two-day trip to Bitburg. We spent about three, four hundred dollars with the shopping, with grocery shopping. We load up the back seat under the cars. All those suitcases were full of groceries and canned goods. I think the customs people at the borders must have known what we were doing, but since we had American passports, they never said anything. Just let us go. We were Americans. The victors, conquerors, helpers of France, supporters of Germany for 30, 40 years. And now peace has come to Europe, finally. Russia's got to go through their scenario with another revolution, probably. But at least the rest of the world isn't involved in it, we hope. That 90 on the back of the Volvo was when you put your snow tires on. You could only go 90 kilometers an hour. I think that's why I was shooting that. And now we're in Verdun, or one of the World War II battlefields. It's World War I bunkers. We pulled right up to a bunker this time. It was probably November, December time frame. No, no tourists to speak of, so we got right in where the, the bunkers were. There's the little Maji with her red coat on. And World War I was even a more vicious war in terms of hand-to-hand -hand combat than World War II was. And uh, we're, those are the signs of Luxembourg and Fort de Vaux. We used to go through, there's a, a, a killed a dead lion as a memorial to the, the dead soldiers. And there's still a lot, of, a lot of unexploded shells, so they had those warning signs, don't wander around the fields, only go where the, the uh, scenes were. And here's a trip to Provence, a medieval town and to the east of Paris, about 50, 60 miles. Quite an interesting city. Ancient city f founded in Roman times and is still kept in this medieval state. There's a Roman-type fortress in the background. There's the mark plots we're walking through. Here's the Caesar's Tower, as they call it, probably built as a, a watchtower on the on the on the um, fortified wall of Provence, Provence, and this was uh, one of the the light structures, lanterns hanging outside the wall to see when you came to the to the gateway, they could light. Pagan ceremony grounds from the Roman days, pre-Christian days. How would you pronounce that? Q-U-I-R-I-A-C, Curiash. Dates from the 12th and 13th centuries in Provence, and it was built right on the pagan ceremony grounds, as so many churches. That's Notre Dame in Paris is built right on the pagan ceremony. Ile de la Cité, the island that Notre Dame is on, was the original city of Paris, the fortress that the barbarians used to go on, and they had their place where they would burn their offerings and kill prisoners probably. And there's GBF by the Caesar's Tower with a little mustache. Still have that sweater, that camel hair turtleneck sweater with a patch. 
boys back at the Bitburg again for another shopping tour. We must have gone there about once a month. Every four or five weeks we'd take a run to Bitburg, see the Burks, have some fun. Kids would see each other. Stewart had had a brain tumor operation around this time. Oh, we're leaving the officers club. We used to get lobster dinners there, lobster and steak dinners for two, three, four bucks. Unbelievable. What a price performer. Karen looking very beautiful. Oh, she's still hobbling. I think she has her cast off, but still has... Do you still have any pains from that ankle, sweetie? I know that was a painful experience. There's the Volvo loaded up again. Grocery bag sitting in the back. And here is Regina and Leo Hendler came to Paris, stopped in Paris on one of their world travels. Regina in her fur coat. Their last child, last son, just got married. All three kids are married now. He's a, a very religious person. Not sure if he's a rabbi, but a religious instructor going to the yeshiva in Brooklyn. Has uh, become a very ultra-Orthodox Jew. And Leo is a dentist, of course. Regina is a school teacher, full-time school teacher in New York. They live in just over the bridge. Um, and here's the drugstore, Caf not a cafeteria, but it's called the Le Drugstore. I took them uh, to Trocadero and down the Champs Elysees. And there's Folka crossing the street. Are we in Pinneberg here? I think we might be in Pinneberg. Let me see. That was Pinneberg, and now we're going up to Silt for four days of sun and rain. We had real mixed weather. We take the Autotsug across. This is where you get on the car train. Put your car on the train, and then you, you sit right in the car, and it's about an hour ride. You're on the island. The car's coming off. Good exit ramps cost about 10 15 bucks in those days there's the the genie bug but it doesn't look oh yeah that was the genie bug it looked sort of red there for a moment there's the yellow genie bug auto train knock silt silt is a island retreat for Germans as cold weather most of the time very invigorating Frisian islands are not too far from here. Here we stayed at the Hotel the Insel, took a, a pension room. That's how windy it was. It was really breezy there. I think you'll see the the special chairs they have that you sit in to block your to get blocked from the wind because the the wind picks up the sand and it's just like sandpaper being rubbed into your face. They had also had we'll see it uh, tennis courts later on that they dug down about 10 15 feet below sea level to keep the wind going over the top of the tennis court rather than across it which you'd never been able to play tennis the ball would have been just being driven everywhere by the wind there it is right there this is the tennis court it's actually 10 15 maybe 20 feet below sea level if you see the level of the houses back there this tennis courts are dug well below where folk is standing looking down 10, 15 feet, or the, and then plus the sand would pick up too. The the clay would just be driven all over, as well as the balls. And here's the the beach at could be List, a harbor at List. It has beautiful sand dunes all over. This is where we had our first or my first FKK experience. No big deal. Once you get naked on the beach, it's just. Like everybody else, no one's looking at you, you're not looking at anybody. You become very relaxed very quickly. It's all mental, as most things are. You can do whatever you think you can do, or not. In, other, in either case, you're right. Here's a seagull with a snake. That's a dead snake it found, and it was trying to figure out how he could eat this semi-petrified snake. Those are the dunes, beautiful sand dunes, well protected all over the island of um, Silt, as well as all over Germany. They've really done a good job of, or at least West Germany, trying to protect their environment. East Germany is a disaster. It is a nightmare, as is all the communist countries with their lack of